Hello watch fans, this is Anders here on Time and Crown channel. So a quick review of a cool summer watch from Orient. Orient is kind of a sister brand to Seiko, a Japanese watch brand, and they make a lot of very affordable watches. I saw this watch online and I decided to buy it because it is a watch I owned several times before, but now it's in a new very cool colorway, which I really just fell for. So the watch comes in this nice little box here. Of course, it's a very affordable watch from Orient, so not too much done with the packaging, but faux leather and a nice aluminium plate here with the Orient logo, with the lions and the Orient name. So just before I open the watch box and show you the watch, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do hit the subscribe button. It's a big help. Also, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. And if you're Danish, Swedish or Norwegian in language, Scandinavian, then check out my website, Time and Crown. This is a new professional news watch media timeandcrown.dk you can find the link down in the description so let's have a look at the watch and open the box here so here we have it this particular watch is a new colorway of the orient kamasu mego 3 this is the darker blue and lighter blue colorway they do have several other versions a silver and brown a black gray with gilt a blue with the pepsi bezel insert and a red with a red gray insert. So let's just take it out of the, the little box here and show you the reference number. You can just pause the screen if you want the reference number. I'm leaving it down in the description as well. And here the watch is out of the box. You see a dive watch on a stainless steel bracelet. It's 316L stainless steel, aluminum bezel insert, the typical 15 minute countdown, and then the Every 10 minute counter here, loom pip at 12 o'clock, typical oyster style bracelet, brushed on the top, polished on the sides, push pins, stamped metal clasp with a friction closing mechanism and then the fold over, orient name and logo here, nice little polished chamfering here, nice brushing as well, very simple clasp, you also have a two push button release, so a very secure clasp with four micro adjustments. The bracelet is, as I said, push pins, very, very easy to adjust. So no Seiko annoying tubes or anything like that from Orient, the sister brand, very easy to adjust. Here you see the case back, all the different information. And the case is both polished and brushed. You see the polishing on the sides here, both sides. Then you have the brushing on the locks and also a nice chamfering here with polishing, that's really nice. I bought this watch in Denmark from an online retailer, very inexpensive, at least in Danish prices because everything is very expensive in my country. So 298 US dollars, everything included, brand new. I see these watches online between 250 and 350 US dollars. So have a look at eBay Chrono24, just Google the reference number. Then you can definitely find a nice deal, especially if you live in the US. Having a closer look at the dial here, you see we get this kind of mixture between a classic Seiko SKX layout. Let's just have the Seiko SKX on the side here. You see the date date complication, the name at 12 o'clock and then very simply dive watch. You see 200 meters of water resistance, 20 bars above six o'clock. So the other inspiration is definitely the Longxin Hydro Conquest, in my opinion. So if you kind of mix the Hydro Conquest with Seiko layout, you get this Orient dial because you get the 6, 9 and 12 numerals. At 3 o'clock, a day date complication, you see. The dial here is a dark blue with a kind of matte finish. You see the hour markings here. As well as the numerals, they are kind of applied to the dial. I don't think they are applied, they are stamped on, but it gives a nice dimension to the dial. For example, compared to the Seiko where everything is just printed, so you get no dimension to the dial. Here you actually get this nice dimension with something applied or printed to the dial. The hands are simple sword style hands, and then a very nice detail with the second hand, which is this orange color. I really think the orange blends really nicely in together with the blue here. And Japanese at 12 o'clock, it is a Japan made watch, everything in-house from Orient. So let's just have a loom shot while we're at it. I'm super happy with this loom. You can see amazing loom because the loom is just amazing on this watch. Also quite responsive in low light situations. 
So let's just have a, a bezel test here. Nice coin etching, 120 clicks. It feels exactly like a lot of Seiko bezels, this very soft gliding click. It's not like a, a very metallic tough click, it's very gliding, still a little bit back play, but it feels extremely secure, 120 clicks, and everything aligns. That's something that their sister brand doesn't always manage, signed screw down crown. And with the crown you have manual winding, you also have hacking with this movement, and you can of course set the time, the day, and the date. The movement inside of this watch is an in-house orient movement, it is the F6922 day date movement, it has 22 joules, it beats at 21,600 patients power, and I believe it has approximately 40 to 42 hours of power reserve. You see, really nice accuracy for an affordable watch like this, it's definitely better than the tolerances that they state, so approximately 10 to 12 seconds plus per day is perfectly fine for this movement. So I removed three links to have this bracelet fit my 17 and a half centimeter wrist circumference, and let's just have the weight. So approximately 156 grams, that's perfectly fine for a dive watch like this. It is a watch that is 41.9 millimeters in diameter. It is 47.1 millimeters from lock tip to lock tip, and with the bracelet you have female in length, so it will wear close to its size. 12.8 millimeters in thickness, and you don't have any dome to this sapphire crystal, which I believe also has a AR treatment. At least it really is easy to read in sunlight. Then you have a 22 mm lock width here, so it's very easy to find other straps, and it tapers down to 20 mm. So here you have the watch on my wrist. I definitely feel it wears much more like maybe a 41 mm watch. Maybe it's because it's such a compact case, only 47 mm from lock tip to lock tip, and you have these nice downwards sloping locks, so it wears very close to its size. I do wear it on a nice rubber strap. This is a rubber strap I actually got from Do It Yourself Watch Club when I made my own dive watch. You can find the link to that video down in the description. And I'm saying this because my biggest gripe with this watch is definitely the bracelet. It's not a totally crappy bracelet, but still, this is just, it's, uh, it's ugly. And my biggest problem is that they made a 22mm lock with here. It's simply too much for this watch. I think it, it looks kind of silly to have this very long opening between the locks here. Instead of just 20 millimeters or even, I know this is almost sacrilege, but 21 millimeters. 22 is simply too much, and the bracelet it becomes very massive on the wrist. I would recommend spending maybe 20 or 50 US dollars extra and getting an aftermarket bracelet, or maybe and getting a nice rubber strap or leather strap or something like that, because the bracelet is the weak point of this watch. All in all, you can't complain about the quality you get for less than 300 US dollars. Pretty nice in-house movement, nice bezel action, nice colorway, day-date complication, great loom, screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. Pretty nicely finished case with a little bit of chamfering, which is pretty nice at this price point. Of course, it is very hard competition for these Japanese brands, just like it is for the German and the Swiss brands to compete with the Chinese brands. So for example, San Martin, you can probably get a watch like this for 200 US dollars. It's not with in-house movement, but you will get a sapphire inlay. On the other hand, I want something original, I want something from a real brand, and getting a watch that is completely in-house made like this, I think is a really sweet deal. It's not perfect, I would definitely have wished that they did something with the bracelet, it's horrible, but I was expecting a horrible bracelet at this price point. I hope you enjoyed the full review of this new Orient Kamasu Mako 3, the blue one, really cool colorway, really nice package for less than 300 US dollars in my opinion. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a comment down below, and give this video a thumbs up. Also, visit my website if you're Danish, Norwegian, or Swedish. It is timeandcrown.dk. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.